if his greatness isn't enough to make you choose to be thankful, let me keep going and give you number two. The second reason why I believe that we should choose to be thankful is because not only is he a great God, he's a great provider. Uh, can somebody right now uh, just say God is a provider? If that's not enough for you to leave God a thank you note, uh, must I go back to my introduction about church serve us last Sunday? Uh, these people didn't have nothing. Uh, these people were down to their last. Uh, there were people when we were giving them the shoes, they opened the box and they took the old shoes off that had holes in them and they put the new shoes on. That actually is a picture of me and a guy named Stovall. Stovall went somewhere after he got the clothes at St. John's and he went took off his old clothes and put on his new clothes. And Stovall came to me and said, Pastor, I just want to come show you how fresh and clean I am. I say, stop all going and kill him then with your fresh self. He did not know that morning. Ah, good God. He didn't know that morning uh, that who he was Saturday was going to be different from the person that he was on Sunday. But somebody's prayer Saturday night could have been, Lord, I need a new pair of shoes. I'm tired of stepping on these rocks and the rocks cutting me in my feet. Somebody's prayer Saturday night could have been, Lord, I need, it's getting cold out here. I need something heavier than what I got on. Somebody's prayer Saturday night could have been, Lord, I just need some deodorant. And somehow, some way, we had already been planning to be down there to ensure that we had the resources that they needed and we became the manifestation of the answered prayer. I'm here to tell somebody today, God has already provided for you. The people, they just showed up. We had already had the provision, but we just had to wait to the date on the calendar. That's why I'm telling somebody today, you better not ever be found not giving God praise because you could be slowing up the process of the manifestation of the provision of God. In the comment section, if I have a few people that can testify about the provisions of God that, that he has bestowed upon your life, just give me a thumbs up in the comment section. He's provided a way out of no way so many times. He's provided a roof over your head, clothes on your back. He's provided healing that baffled the doctors. He's got us out of some stuff that if the truth be told, we should still be tied up, tangled up, and wrapped up in. He's provided protection over our kids. Even when they told us that they was one place and they really was somewhere else, but God still protected them and got them back home safely. You you ought to go wake up your kids and tell them right now, tell God thank you for the stuff you did that I don't even know about. David says, praise the Lord. Praise God, our Savior, for each day he carries us in his arms. Our God is a God who saves the sovereign Lord, rescues us from death. Uh, for each day he carries us in his arms. For each day he carries us in his arms. For each day he carries us in his arms. Um, that's why I ain't got to get nothing new to send God a thank you note. Just knowing that he's carrying me in the cradle of his arms is enough uh, for me to rear back and tell God thank you. You. It reminds me of the story about the footprints in the sand. Uh, the man got to heaven and he got upset, uh, had plex on his breath. I could just see the man now acting like Mattress Mac was when he was out there and the people in Philly tried to check him and they didn't realize that he's a Northside boy. You can find him off 45 in between Parker and Titwell. Y'all know who I'm talking about. And this man, he probably went to God in the same energy that Mattress Mac had and God had to tell him, calm down because the man was upset because when he was going through the worst seasons of his life, the worst periods of his life, uh, it seemed as if there was only one set of footprints in the sand. Uh, but when things were better, when he got the promotion, when he got the house, uh, uh, when he graduated from college, it seemed like there were two sets in the sand. And God had to tell him, brother, you are sadly mistaken. In those times when you only saw one set of footprints, those footprints were mine. You weren't able to get through what you were going through by yourself. I had to care. 
carry you. Is it anybody on this live that can just take a second and tell God right now in your house, God, thank you for carrying me. Uh, it's only about 30 of y'all that would really appreciate this. But when everybody else dropped you. God, he carried you when you felt like that you were going to lose your mind. God, he carried you when it felt like that you were drowning in something. God picked you up out of what you were drowning in, lifted you above the heavy flood waters, and he began to walk on top of the thing that was trying to take you under. Somebody right now just say, Lord, thank you for carrying me. Let me take this a step further because our mental capacity of the provisions of God seemingly are limited to what we can see. Let me say that again. Uh, uh, the, the mental capacity of the provisions of God seemingly are limited to what we can see. But in this same scripture, in the New King James Version, it said, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. I'm about to lose it up here in this good TWC studio. It said, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Let me say it one more time. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. When we think of the provision of God, we think about what's being given to us. But here the Bible talks about what is being done for us. Daily, he's loading us with benefits. And just so we're clear, Webster defines the word benefit as an advantage or profit gained from something. Excuse me if I choose to be thankful even when it looks like I should be somewhere sulking and complaining. I'm a beneficiary. I'm standing here today because daily, he's loading me with benefits. I can't pay for the rooms that I have access to. I don't have enough money to sit at the tables with half of the people that I know. I'm not smart enough to sit on the stages that I sit on, but daily he's loading me with benefits. Daily he is giving me an advantage. Daily he's profiting me. Daily I am gaining from something that he has given me that I cannot give to myself. Is it anybody on this broadcast right now that can join me and testify smarts didn't get me where I am today. Good looks didn't get me here. My bank account didn't get me here. My credit score show didn't get me here. But I'm standing here today only because he made a way. That's why David said, bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits. Uh, David, what are his benefits? David started going down the list. Verse three said he forgives all your iniquities. He heals all your disease. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies and he satisfies your mouth with good things. If you didn't know, now you know he's worthy to be praised. I'm done right here because maybe his greatness ain't enough. Uh, maybe him being a provider ain't enough. Uh, uh, those things enough should be, those things should be enough for you to choose to be thankful. But if somebody that's on the fence, I can feel it uh, because you're looking at your situation. Uh, you're looking at your bank account. Uh, you're looking at the doctor's report and maybe you can't find a reason to be thankful. Uh, but I want to leave uh, you with this verse. And this verse is the last reason why I feel in all things we should give thanks is because Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, but thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our 